Stable Diffusion is a text-to-image diffusion model that can generate high-quality images from text descriptions. It is one of the most powerful text-to-image models available today, and it is relatively easy to use. One of the challenges of using this model is the need for significant computing power. This can make it difficult for people to utilize stable diffusion on their personal computers. Google Collab is a cloud-based platform that provides users with access to powerful GPS. This enables the use of stable diffusion on Google Collab without the requirement for a powerful computer. In this video, we will guide you on how to use stable diffusion on Google Collab. We'll also go through the steps of generating your own images from text descriptions. What you will learn in this video. How to utilize stable diffusion on Google Collab. Generating images from text descriptions. Tips and tricks for effective use of stable diffusion. Let's get started. To get started with using Stable Diffusion in the cloud, the first step is to open your Google search page. Type Stable Diffusion Google Collab into the search bar. When you enter this search query, you will likely see the option for the Stable Diffusion. Click on this link. Once you click on the Stable Diffusion, you'll notice that it's hosted on GitHub. One of the initial actions to take is to click on the Copy to Drive button. When you do this, the file will be duplicated into your own Google Drive account. This is a necessary step because it allows you to work with the file in Google Collab while being connected to your Google Cloud Platform GCP environment. After the file has been copied to your Google Drive, you'll need to open it in a new tab in order to start using Google Collab effectively in your own Google Drive, which will be connected to your GCP environment. The usage of stable diffusion involves employing a text-to-image diffusion model developed by a group of researchers and engineers powered by hugging Facebook. Notably, this particular model doesn't require the use of any specific tokens to function. Upon scrolling down, you'll find instructions on how to utilize the Stable Diffusion pipeline. Before delving into the intricacies of how Stable Diffusion works, it's advisable to execute a simple trial run. Before we move on to the next part, I wanted to take a moment to ask for your support. We put a lot of effort into making quality videos for you, and we would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to our channel and liking our videos. This will help us to reach a wider audience and create even more amazing content for you. Thank you for your support. Now, let's get back into the video. To ensure that the GPU runtime of the current notebook is appropriately configured, you'll find a clickable green arrow. Once you click it, the appearance of a dotted line around the green arrow signifies the successful functioning of the GPU setup both within the notebook and on the Google Cloud Platform GCP. As you proceed through the instructions, you'll encounter guidelines that direct you to install various components, such as diffusers, script EFD, transformers, and accelerate. To facilitate smoother loading processes, you can swiftly install these components by clicking on the green arrow once again. In this process, the utilization of pip install, a Python dependency manager, ensures the smooth download of all necessary dependencies onto the Python environment. It's crucial to remember that these operations are executed solely on Google Colab and GCP, effectively eliminating the need to run them on your local machine. The entire setup typically takes around 17 seconds, providing a hassle-free and seamless installation process. These steps streamline the initial setup process, ensuring that the environment is fully equipped to handle stable diffusion effectively and efficiently. Continuing further down the page, you'll come across information about the Stable Diffusion Pipeline and the essential steps required to get it up and running. Here, you can swiftly click on the green arrow, which will facilitate the execution of the necessary commands. This action will involve the import of Torch and the setup of the Stable Diffusion Pipeline. Since PyRch is a substantial dependency, the download process might take a bit longer. As you observe the process, you'll notice that it's downloading various models, text files, and other crucial dependencies. Hang tight during this phase as it ensures the acquisition of all the vital elements for stable diffusion on the Google Collab and GCP platform. It's important to remember that Google Collab is currently available for free. These are two tips to consider while working on it. Use a faster internet connection or upgrade your Google Collab storage. The download speed of the dependencies and models will depend on your internet connection speed and the amount of storage space available on your Google Collab account. If you are experiencing slow download speeds, try using a faster internet connection or upgrading your Google Collab storage. Consult the official Stable Diffusion documentation. If you encounter any errors during the installation process, please consult the official Stable Diffusion documentation for help. By visiting this link we put in description, 
also this link for you. Indeed, GCP and Google Colab present an ideal solution for running resource-intensive software without burdening your local machine. This approach is especially beneficial for heavy tasks that demand significant computational resources. Let's fast forward through the installation process, as it may vary in duration depending on your internet speed. On completion, the next step involves transferring the pipeline to the GPU, thereby establishing a faster connection. This integration with the GPU on GCP and Google Collab significantly enhances the overall efficiency of the applications. Now let's proceed to generate some images. Within the notebook, there's an example image depicting an astronaut riding a horse. To modify this, we'll change the image description to a monkey riding on a horse and adjust the image path accordingly. Once these changes are made, we can execute the code. This process requires providing a prompt, such as a monkey riding on a horse, which serves as the primary text used for the image transformation. The variable images is then passed through the pipeline, and we're primarily interested in retrieving the first image. Observing the successful transformation of the prompt monkey riding on a horse into an image of a monkey riding. A horse serves as a confirmation of stable diffusion's capabilities. You can notice the resultant image displayed within Google Cloud, directly reflecting the output obtained from stable diffusion on your Google Cloud notebook. Continuing further down the instructions, you'll come across extra guidelines. It's mentioned that running the cell multiple times will yield different images each time, but these images are stored under a unique key known as a manual seed. Consequently, executing the code using this manual seed repeatedly will always return the same image, ensuring consistency in the output. On the contrary, running the code without the manual seed generates different images each time, allowing for a diverse set of outputs with every execution. Further down the notebook, you'll notice the option to adjust the number of steps taken by stable diffusion to generate a solution based on your input. By decreasing the number of steps from 50 to 15, you might observe a notable difference in the quality of the generated image. Reducing the number of steps often results in the generation of suboptimal images, such as the instance of a large monkey riding a small horse, which might not precisely match your initial expectation. Moreover, you have the option to specify the grid and the number of times you want the prompt to be executed. By setting the number of images to three and running the code accordingly, the system will generate three separate images based on the provided prompt. This process will take approximately three times longer compared to generating a single image, but it grants you access to a set of three distinct images derived from your original prompt. Upon execution, the results showcase a range of interpretations, including a human with a monkey face riding a horse, a monkey riding a horse, and a monkey sitting on a horse. These generated images are the product of an AI model's interpretation of the textual prompts provided and they are not owned by any specific entity. Certainly, within the notebook, there's an option to specify the creation of images using specific grids. If you modify the prompt to monkey, riding a horse and execute the code, the system will utilize the provided prompt to generate a series of images, each associated with a distinct grid index. Tip, want to generate multiple images from a single prompt. Simply specify the number of images you want, and the system will generate them for you. For example, to generate three images of a monkey riding a horse, set the number of images to three and run the code. The system will generate three separate images based on the provided prompt. This process will take approximately three times longer compared to generating a single image, but it grants you access to a set of three distinct images derived from your original prompt. Grid setup includes parameters, such as the number of columns and rows. By defining the grid as three columns and four rows, the code will iterate through each grid square, creating an image for each square. Subsequently, these images will be appended to a list, enabling the presentation of the entire grid with the corresponding images within each cell. It's important to note that Stable Diffusion possesses the capability to detect potentially not safe for work US view content. In such cases, it employs a black box to conceal the inappropriate content. This feature ensures that the generated images remain within appropriate and safe boundaries, preventing any potentially offensive or explicit visuals from being produced. The series of images produced reflect various interpretations of monkeys riding on horses, each generated by stable diffusion based on the provided prompt. This functionality underscores the versatility and reliability of stable diffusion's response mechanism, contributing to a robust and efficient image generation process. Hey there, I see you're watching my video, but you haven't liked it yet. That's like watching a puppy play and not giving it a belly rub. It's just not right.
I know you're probably busy, but it only takes a second to click the thumbs up button. Plus, it will make me feel really good. And when I feel good, I make even better videos. So hit that like button and let's move on to the next step, shall we? Okay, so that's exactly what we asked it to do. Stable diffusion can also create images in different resolutions. We can adjust the height and width. So if we type in a monkey on a horse and change the resolution, it'll adjust accordingly. After experimenting a bit, we can discuss what stable diffusion is. It allows us to create images from text in various resolutions and quantities, all using AI and models. It's amazing stuff. If you want to know more about how it works technically, feel free to ask. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about topic of video. I know I did. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We release new videos every week, so you don't want to miss out. If you have any ideas for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. We're always looking for new and interesting topics to cover. We love hearing from you, so please leave us a comment below with your ideas for future videos. We're always looking for new and interesting topics to cover, so don't be afraid to share your thoughts. Thank you again for watching. We hope to see you next time.